Good evening, Raider fans. My name is Sam Stern alongside my good friend and first-time commentator, Dylan, Dylan Cargar. Dylan, to say that I'm excited to have you on the mic tonight would be an understatement. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, Dylan, we got to talk about this first game as Dawit comes up to the table. Dawit, that game was ridiculous. Bro, oh, my we were God. On the court the time. <laughs> oh, I watched you. That was talk about game winners for those of you who tuned in with yeah. Hudson and, and um, C Camille Evangelista who did a phenomenal job both of them one of the best endings to a game I've yeah. seen in a long time now talk to me on that play what a pass that was oh. to find Savitri in pa in the path to the basket all she had to do was just finish and game over that's exactly what I was gonna say Avery took the outlet right away from Sammy pushed the ball up really hard found Savvy right on the cut beautiful pass Savvy had to make a kind of tough layup. Yeah. And, yeah, Seattle ended. We were all on the court yeah. at the end of it. Yeah. Oh, I, it was a hype. And it's packed tonight, Dylan. Oh, this yeah. is definitely the most packed game of the season for either boys or girls. And yeah, it's no. going to stay that way, too. Yeah, it definitely died down a little bit for yep. the boys game, but yep. should be fun. Yeah, we have a great crowd. And, again, Sam Stern, Dylan Cargar is today. Patrick Carlson producing for us, as usually does such a phenomenal job. And Hudson Ridley doing camera for us. He just did that last broadcast. He's phenomenal. You got to make sure to tune in. He does basketball. He does hockey. He's very talented, so tune in. Now, we're going to start with this boys basketball team, Dylan. These Raiders, they're on a, they're on, they're on a streak right now. They, uh, there's a couple losses thrown, it, thrown in here and there, and last game was a tough one, to say the least. But Good luck tonight, guys. Let's get them fired up. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Churchill. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Oh. Churchill was great. Mr. Churchill, who works in the girls' division office, getting us hyped there. But we have the pieces, Dylan, to challenge every team in the state. It's just a matter of putting things together. We definitely do. A big thing I would say is consistency, for sure, because we got players coming off. The most consistent player recently has been Zoe. Yep. Alonzo Paul, number 12. He's been he's been the most consistent so far. Will Barbera, he's been here and there. Yeah. Iffy. And, yeah, we just need a huge spark from players like Archer and them coming yep. off the bench and stuff. And I'm glad you brought up Will Barbera because I feel like he's a key for this team because as, as we've talked about uh, when we've been hanging out outside of this, but Will Barbera is a great player. Club, you played with him on a club team. He's aggressive when he's playing hard, but at times we, we aren't seeing what he could really do on a regular basis. And talk to me, is that is that a nerves thing? Is that a pressure thing? Like what What is it that's keeping him from playing like the guy he is during club season? The main thing I would say is his, his freedom on the court. He feels kind of detained a little bit that he can't have as much freedom as he has yep. in our AAU games. He would shoot the ball, shoot threes more. Like this season, if you check his stats, there's not many threes by Will Barbera this no. season. But throughout the AAU season, he was averaging 15, yeah. 15 points, 20 points, just because he was shooting the ball. Yeah, he's a good shooter. This he is, is a good shooter. It's just a matter of getting it. the yeah. shots up. Yeah, and, and, and but yeah, that's a thing for the whole roster, though. Dylan. Yeah, something else I gotta say is uh, yes, please. Tristan Hurdle on Highlands okay. also played AAU with us. Okay. Uh, he played just one tournament with us, but let me tell you, when he gets hot, he's hot. I'll really? tell you that. What um, position? He could play either or. He's, okay. He's the one right there. About to, if you if you were tuning in right now, he's the one. About to get the ball. Right now he passed the ball going around. Yeah. Okay. He's a great player if he gets hot though. Yeah, he's a big guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and and talk about uh, talk about bigs, Dylan. Chase Allen, I mentioned every broadcast, tough loss, one of our biggest guys on this team, but Clay Nanke. It yeah. obviously we needed a replacement quickly. Yeah. I feel like Clay Nanke was the perfect guy because yes, he's not gonna be yeah. bringing the shooting. But what he does on the defensive end, taking it to the basket, he can dunk the ball, he can take it at will, but his defense especially, Dylan, yeah. the way he guards the centers and forwards is to behold. One thing shocked me the most is how Clay Nick didn't make it yeah. the first cut on varsity. Isn't that amazing? He's phenomenal, in my opinion, as a that replacement for Chase. Yeah. Which is perfectly. It talks about work, worth eth worth eth work ethic, yeah. Dylan. Yeah. I'm trying to get my words out, yeah. but... Again, on this Highlands Ranch team, a team, Dylan, in the past, obviously different this year, that hasn't always been a great team, obviously coming off a really tough playoff loss first round. Will Barbera coming to the table, great to see you, but coming off a tough first round loss at that buzzer beater against Dan and Jamil yeah. and, and the crew, tough way to lose, but yeah. do you think that's going to give this Raiders team any kind of extra added fuel, or do you think that's just in the past? No. Oh, yeah, especially the players on the team last year, like Will Barbera, Michael Wolf, 
coming off yeah. this, the, that like sad loss last year, yeah. they got to have some sort of revenge or payback they want to give back during this game. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of exciting things coming your way as we are about 10 minutes toward tip, tip off. And I'm so excited that you decided to spend your evening with not only Hudson and Cammy, but Dylan Cargars today doing commentating for the first time. So excited again. Yep. And myself, Sam Stern. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, make sure to stay tuned with us. We have about eight minutes till game time until we tip off in this exciting one. You're going to see some Will Barbera finishes. You're going to see some Michael Wolf threes and a lot of great highlights. Sam Stern, Dylan Cargarzade, Patrick Carlson, and Hudson Ridley. We'll see you in a little bit. What's up, Raiders? I'm Skylar Kane. And I'm Caitlin Marshall. And this week, we take a look into the Quiz Bowl Club. Our sports photographer tries <laughs> sports. And we want to know what brings you joy. And it's all happening here, right now, on RJTV. <laughs> One of our many competitive teams here on campus is none other than the Quiz Bowl team. The team competes at state and national level in rounds of academic knowledge questions, including a good showing in Washington, D.C. last year. RJTV reporters Chloe Simon and Eliza West have the story. I joined Quiz Bowl because it was a lot of my friends and I thought it would be a fun new club to try out this year. So I actually started Quiz Bowl here my sophomore year and I had been doing History Bowl since, uh, which is similar to Quiz Bowl, but it's just history questions since my seventh grade year, and I sort of fell in love with that. I do Quiz Bowl because it's fun to do trivia, honestly, and it's even more fun to do it with your friends. Maddie says that she's met a lot of new friends. The It's predominantly a boys division club. Yeah, it's always fun. Uh, like, you get like a little um, anxious sometimes, especially with like Quiz Bowl and History Bowl where they only give you five seconds to answer after you buzz. So like, my brain jumbles up really quickly. My two closest friends are, uh, we're the triumvirate, we are in Quiz Bowl together. And um, that's sort of how we grew as friends. And like, I didn't really expect that coming here, finding my best closest friends in Quiz Bowl of all places, but I have, so. Quiz Bowl's special because we're like a little family of nerds that can talk about the most random facts of history or politics or whatever's going on. They will be competing all throughout this season. If you're interested in joining, make sure you stop by room 254 at Academic Support Tuesday or Friday. This is Chloe Simon and Eliza West for RJTV. Thanks, Chloe and Eliza. New members are always welcome, so be sure to go check them out. And shout out to another one of our competitive club teams, our FBLA club, who had 45 members qualify for state in last weekend's district competition. Now, Caitlin, it's February, the time of the year where the days are short, nights are long, and everybody's always running off to do something. Yeah, that's for sure. It's always a tough part of the year to get through, but we hope to find a way that you can smile. That's right. Like me, enjoying my sponsored locally flavored beverages, Izzy. RJTV reporters Lily Castiglione and SJ Pack set out to say, well, what brings you joy? So let's find out. Christmas. Being with my family. My friends and family. Being out with the people that I love the most. Friends and family. My friends. My dog and my cat. We went around the Regis Jesuit campus asking students and faculty what brings them the most joy. Here are some of their responses. Christmas brings me a lot of joy in my family <laughs> <laughs> and my friends. Answering questions brings me joy. Um, playing soccer and hanging out with my friends and my family. What brings me the most joy is being able to spend really good quality time uh, with people that I, I love and people that I enjoy, whose company I enjoy. Uh, spending time with them really makes me feel good at the end of those moments. And I think that brings me joy. I'm probably hanging out with the people that I love the most, my friends, my coworkers, my students, and puppies. Definitely puppies. What brings you the most joy? Our friends. Our friends. <laughs> this is Lily Castiglione and SJ Pack for RJ Media. Thanks, Lily and SJ. Now for a very special announcement. That's right, Raiders. It's what you've been dying to know. Student Council has been working very hard to bring to you, drumroll please, Regis at the Rocks. 
This dance will be informal, hosted in the Boys Vision Gym, February 28th, so save the date. Tickets will be sold the week of the dance at school, as well as at the door. Tickets are $6. One of those dollars will be donated to Mission Season. And get ready, Raiders, because this dance will be like none other before. More details will be coming in the next couple of weeks. Don't forget, Friday, February 28th. And speaking of ticket sales, the father-daughter dance is coming up. That's right. The father-daughter Roaring Twenties dance is Sunday, March 8th at Empower Field at Mile High Stadium. It will be an evening of fun and dancing with your dads, including dance and costume contests. Register today on the school's website. And now for some big news. We have been chosen by the Denver Nuggets for a Special Olympics Unified Takeover on Tuesday, February 14th. That's right, the Denver Nuggets spirit team and announcers will be here to pump up the crowd for our unified athletics and partner with the halftime show. We want to fill all the stands for that. Finally, today on RJTV, you know her as the A sports and event photographer. Football, basketball, soccer, swim and dive, cheer, hockey, concerts, and even eSports. But the real question is, can Sophia Marcinek even play any of the listed above? <laughs> Let's find out. Thanks, Olivia and Sophia. Well, I think that's all we have for this week. I'm Skylar Kane. And I'm Caitlin Marshall. Peace. Peace. Welcome back as we hear Blakely Stoughton's name come on by Mr. Taylor, our phenomenal PA announcer. He's been doing it for years. There, there's a reason why he's great in the business, but uh, we got Will Barbera jumping high Whoa. as he comes on. The, our good friend Will Barbera, he was hooping up this weekend, Dylan. If he can play like he was playing in our four-on-four, four, I, I think we're set for a big game. Oh, definitely, for sure. <laughs> the way he was shooting those threes, Dill, <laughs> we, were quite, we were quite the trio yeah. going on. <laughs> Let me tell uh, you about it, yeah. But, so we got this game going, and someone I forgot to talk about in our pregame, we got to talk about him. Alonzo Paul, and oh we God. were talking, we were talking about it uh, in the car ride to play basketball Saturday. But Alonzo, the way he drives to the rim, it does not matter if a seven footer is guarding him; he goes up with the same confidence every time, and he's finishing way more often. The way he stepped it up from the start of the season has really impressed me. Like, yeah. the, the players knew because in the group chat they voted him team captain. Yep. And they knew before it all that he was probably one of the top players in the team. Yep. Eventually, when the chance came, he took that chance. Yeah. So here we go with Tip, Kyle Sandler, Ty Bergman, Blakely Stoughton, Alonzo Paul, and Will Barbera rounding out our starting five. And here we go. It's Tip off. And 
Highlands Ranch wins it. That is number five, Riker Sidorak. Here we go. There's Working Tristan. the dribble. And Dylan, you're going to talk more about him as the broadcast yeah. goes on. A stretch four who can shoot the ball. Yeah, you don't want him to get hot. Trust me. Working it. Alonzo Paul guarding the corner. Will Barbera helping up top, top of the key. A great defender. That's his, been his calling card this season, is on the defensive end, still trying to get his offensive rhythm. As you can see, Eleven's trying to post up Zoe. They're not just feeding, they're not feeding him the ball. Zoe's doing a good job fronting him right now. Yep. Deep three for Highlands Ranch. They got it. What a shot. 23. Tristan Hurdle. <laughs> Let me tell you, you don't want to get him hot. Trust me. Tristan Hurdle pulling up. Kyle Sandler, answer. Long. No good. And something, Dill, we know Kyle Sandler takes a lot of threes. Yeah. He's been making a little bit more lately than he normally has. Tristan again oh. off that time. But they're wanting Kyle to make it on a more consistent clip if possible. With Kyle, it's like a hit or miss here. Alonso, fake. Blakely, three. No What good. a pass by Zoe, though. I'll say that. Will Barbera gets it off the save. What a play. Ooh. Oh. I don't know if that was an alley oop a shot, but either way, <laughs> yeah. bounced off the rim. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to get Blakely his first dunk. He's yeah. had a couple <laughs> attempts this season, Dylan. I don't know if that's the best way to get it, though. <laughs> an alley oop. Yeah. Oh. oh. Blakely with great the defensive muscle. 23. Mason Moyle cutting in the middle. He wants that mismatch against Alonzo Paul, but Alonzo Paul is fronting him well. Great defense by the Raiders. Good job getting through that screen by Blakely. Double team, corner, three, off. And that should be a foul on Alonzo Paul. And, and Dylan, that's going to be a mismatch throughout the game. But I love Alonzo Paul working on the defensive end. Yes, height mismatch, obviously. But it doesn't matter. If you're working hard, boxing out, that's all that matters. I feel like even if number 11 gets the ball on the post, he doesn't know how to work the post. With Zoe's quickness, he can easily steal the ball, in my opinion. And that's a foul. Count it. That was 24. Sullivan de Guzman getting his first basket of the game. De Guzman, what, what is it, Dill? Talk to me. I'll just stick with you. <laughs> okay. You yeah. Michael Wolf comes in for Alonzo Paul. I think they sensed the height mismatch, and they brought in Michael Wolf to supplement that tough matchup down low. So here comes the and one free throw for Sullivan. The six foot one senior off right, and there's Blakely Sound with the board. For us to play really good tonight, I think Mike needs to get hot early. Yes. Bart. Oh. Will Barbera oh. blocked. What a play. Here comes Highlands Ranch. They're a great transition team. Almost lost it. Great passing. Very patient. Working the post, and it's oh. stolen. Here comes Barbera. This is where he's lethal. And turnover. And, you, and that's something that's tough. We can't afford. Will Barbera, though, gets a tap on it. Great play, but we cannot afford to turn the ball over on a consistent rate, Dill. Yeah, we can't. As I saw throughout the stats, Will Barbera is one of the top um, leading the state in steals this season. I've yeah. checked. He's averaging about 2.5 a game. And it's been his calling card, Dill. Yeah, without a doubt. Mason Moyle moving around. He's a shooter. He's number 11 on oh, the left of your screen. Call a travel, and they did. Great Definitely. defense from the Raiders, forcing this Highlands Ranch team to pass it around to oblivion. Will Barbera is going to take this one out of bounds. Going to give it to Michael Wolf, who's going to run this one. Hopefully Will, hopefully Will Barbera hasn't lost his confidence after that turnover and block shot. And I don't think he should. He that should just know. fuel he him to yeah. increase his level of play. Yeah. Ty Bergman, pump fake with the left. Will's calling for the ball. Will's wide open. Oh, oh. goes up with that. Going strong. Rebound. Oh. oh, how about a foul? Kyle, no good. And Highlands Ranch gets it. I thought there was about, there three, was about three fouls on that play. Yeah. Either way, here comes Highlands Ranch. Tristan's this all-around player, taking the ball up the court, posting up, shooting threes, just everything's there. Coming off the screen. For Blakely oh. sound. How about a dunk? This is the first. first Blakely. Uh, nah. He finished. He learned his lesson from the last game. <laughs> exactly. Well, we, we like the guaranteed points, Dylan. <laughs> We great do. play there from Blakely Stout. That he, he's such a great defender. It's almost like he reads the play before it even happens oh. every single time. With his athleticism, it's special to see. Will Barbera. See, he's played oh, it Blakely again. coming to us. Great play from Blakely Stout. Aggressive as usual. Good job by Blakely by shooting the gaps. Shooting the gaps every time. 
This is number 15 on the bottom of your screen. That's Connor Lathrop going to take this one out. Coming is Michael Wolf on the defensive end. He's a lefty. You got to force him right, Mike. That's my best bet right as of now. The Raiders are starting off in a man press. If Mike forces 24 right, he has nowhere to go, in my opinion. He's a strictly left hand. Blake is down Blake. again, reading the lane. Take, contorts, wow. and scores. Blakely Stoughton, what a move to get open for the layup. He has four. What a play from Blakely Stoughton. Four quick points, four to five. Raiders down one. Once Mike starts forcing 24 or left, you'll see starts forcing him right. You'll see some big difference in their offensive game plans right now. And I like the defensive effort that's going on right now, Dylan. I yeah. think they're playing well. That one's yeah. a bad four shot there by by 35, Kendall Hollins, who just checked in. Wolf to Blakely. Why not? Misses it that oh, time. Ty gets up there. Oh. Ooh. That was the highest he's jumped this entire yeah. season, Dylan. What a play. <laughs> Trying to get the offensive rebound, but comes down to Highlands Ranch. Again, this is number 11, Moyle, working the dribble. At the top of your screen oh. against Will Barbera. What a spin move, working it to the corner. Regis playing well. Here's your friend, Dill. Spin oh, move. Oh, I that's off of him. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. This is an easy one. Shouldn't even take a conversation. Yeah, no, I saw it easily. Come on, right off of there. Thank you. Yep. Shouldn't have even had a conversation, but it's okay. We'll accept it. Good correction with the sideline ref. <laughs> yes. And Dylan, I'm going to take advantage of you being here as a club ref outside of school, which oh, yeah. you, we know we're going to have to hear your, <laughs> your opinions on the calls. Yeah. So obviously we both agreed on that one. Blakely Stoughton looking for an open man. It's Michael Wolf up top. He has limitless range. He's not afraid to shoot it. Neither is Kyle. And he nails it. His first main three of the game. That's Deep one and down. That's one thing I like about Kyle is if he misses it, he's not afraid. His confidence doesn't go down. He just keeps shooting. What a shot there as Clay Nanke is about to check in. The six foot seven center. Play tight end on the football team. Will Barbera playing like a tight end on the defensive end as Regis gets the steal. Will Barbera still yet to score. Kyle, how about a second one? Short. Looked online, little hurried, and here comes Highlands Ranch. Michael Wolf on the ground, hustling. Just sloppy basketball right now. Hollins, mid range. An unconventional shot that goes off the backboard and in. Honestly, if I'm the Raiders, I want Hollins to take that shot. You, you got to make him shoot the ball. Yeah. You can't let him take it in because that's what he does is take the ball in the paint. As uh, number five, Riker, check it back. Wolf, in. three, off. As I said, he's not afraid to just pull up. Archer checking this with Clay Nakey. Can't wait to watch Archer Van Sickle. Great player. Barbera losing a little bit, was able to keep it over to Kyle. Ty Bergman, shot. Long off the back. Oh, off. And it should be Regis Ball, and it is. Now talk to me. Uh, what do you think? Obviously, Raiders playing pretty well to start off this game. I am seeing a couple turnovers here and there and having trouble finding offense on a consistent basis. What is the game plan on the offensive end for this team? Well, so they run different types of sets throughout the season. So they have one name up where they have somebody in the middle. Like it could be either or like a catch and go player or just a big yes. man. They also have Sickle a, nails the three. They also have a drive and kick play called three they yep. run. So it's just anybody honestly find the gap to just shoot the gap and then look for a kick out for the open three. Yeah, and it seems to work well, especially yeah. in the last couple of games. Just a matter of finding those open yeah. shots and scoring them, and find who's hot at the right time. Exactly. Great press by Michael Wolf. Clay Nanke helping oh. on the screen. Archer Euro step. Good defense by Clay. Hands up. Foul Clay Nanke. Oh. Ooh. Great defense from Clay Nanke defending the paint as he always does. Good what pass a pass Wolf. to Blakely! And he oh. fouled. What court vision from Michael Wolf in transition. Wow! As Blakely Stoughton almost finished off an and one. Instead, he'll go to the line for two, wearing the nice Kyrie's. If this was the NBA, they'd review that call. <laughs> they they yeah. would. Now, I'm glad you brought that up. That all-star game, Dylan. Oh. 
That was by far the best All-Star game that I've witnessed. I loved how competitive they were. The, I loved seeing Chris Paul and LeBron James and James Hart in the face of the refs like, you're going to call a, yeah. a foul on Joel Embiid? Yeah. Like, I loved it. One thing, I, it was a great game. One thing that yeah. really disappointed me was how they went on the free throw. Yeah. Yeah. You're Hopefully right. they change it up next year, but. Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, for the most part, it was good. Good defense by Kyle right now. Everyone on the Raiders are in sync in, on defense. What a pull up. Good. Dylan's friend, Tristan Hurdle. He has five points in that first quarter. 12 to 9 as Bull Barbera and Ty Bergman will check in at the break. Now, a good start, I'd say, on both ends. It, it's pretty consistent for the most part. A uh, couple threes, couple layups, and some free throws. All around game, pretty good, but defensively, Dylan. I think that there's still room for improvement, especially on that mid-range and pull-up game. You can't let them get those pull-up mid-rangers. You also can't let them get to the basket. I would say their defense right now is pretty good, holding them down to nine points and whatnot. The rotation's there. They're scrambling really well. They're just, just not getting luck because at the start, uh, Tristan Hurdle had a, had a wide-open three at the start, and then the next wide-open one, he break off the glass. It's just so iffy, their defense. It's, they're just playing scramble ball right now. Yeah. As Dylan said, it's 12-9, and we have more second quarter action coming your way. It's been a fun evening as we had the girls win a heck of a game against Highlands Ranch. And I was telling Hudson Ridley before the game started, that Highlands Ranch uh, female team, they are phenomenal every year, Dylan. And, they, and fun fact, for those of you who didn't know, I don't know if they talked about it on the last broadcast, they have the only all-female coaching staff in the state of Colorado. Not only that but they also are the most winning uh, coaching staff for a school in high school history for, for girls basketball. So talk about a huge win. That yeah. is, they, they're, it, they're up there every year. Yeah. I really like how the girls play because we practice against them as well. Yeah. We both have played against them. Yeah. Wolf, three. Oh, off. A bit long. So he's 0 of 2 to start off the game, but he can click at any moment. Great transition D by the Raiders, getting back into it. Working the dribble. Archer, late coverage. Will Barbera helping in the middle. Holland, a high arcing shot once again. That's the wow. Shot the, that's the shot the Raiders want. Scraped the rim at the bottom. Archer, that's a good three, shot right there. another. Oh. Off. Archer Van Sickle aggressive. He's one and two from the three point line. They got to have him keep letting him go. He can shoot it. Yeah. Shoot or shoot. That's a shot we want to take by Van Sickle for sure. Even if it's early, just whenever the shot's there. Just Great pass, and a finish from Hollins. Four if quick we, points for Hollins. If we get Hollins to shoot from yeah. a little bit outside the paint, that's a shot we want all day. If he gets in paint, in the paint, it's, it's a problem. Over, yeah. It's a problem. As we see Alonzo Paul checking back in. We need some much needed takes to the rim. Michael Wolf trapped in the corner, about to get double teamed. Gets it out to Ty Berkman. A little clustered on that left side of your screen. Van Sickle, patient. One thing you should keep an eye on is Will's passing against the zone. His vision throughout the zone is phenomenal. Michael Wolf, pump fake, taking a while to find a shot. Some great defense from Highlands Ranch. Oh, Will Rivera, fumbling it. What a pass. pass. Van Sickle, Good three, oh. off. Good Clay Nanke, the one-handed one. board. Got he it. got it, plus the foul. Clay Nanke, what a play. That's that was a big boy board. That was a great positioning by Clay Nake on that rebound. Great. And he, he has that height mismatch for days, and he's had that for multiple games now. If he can find the boards, put it up immediately, and score every time, easy buckets. If they can work Clay into getting a switch and having a smaller man on him and getting him in the post, that's unstoppable in my yeah, opinion. You're right. Because they could kick it out, because they'll double team, something's going to happen. Good boy by Will right there off the missed free throw. That's the one thing for Clay. It's a work in progress is his jumper. He has great form, just not putting enough mustard on that shot. Will Barbera Ooh. off on that one. Wolf with the board. He was just there, yeah. and it bounced right to him. Great awareness by Michael Wolf on that board right below the whim. And it's a five-point lead, Raiders, 16-11. Dylan having a tough time taking notes. I know, yeah. Dylan. Can you imagine what the statistician's job's like? Yeah, I've, I've lost track. <laughs> uh, Deep three. Oh, that's Ooh. Mm -hmm. Hit the cords at the top. So it will be Raiders ball out of bounds. 
So we're forcing him into tough shots. You got to make him shoot those deep ones. I'd much rather that than a take to the yeah. rim like Collins. So we got a timeout. 16-11 with 5.41 left to go in this exciting second quarter, an exciting game. And we have a lot of exciting action coming up. We're getting closer to playoff time, Dylan, and we know how fun that can be. We got our boys basketball team, girls basketball team, and our hockey team in action. And uh, it's, it should be fun. I'm... Dylan, I'm going to go as far as saying I think that at least one of our teams is going to win a championship this year. Oh, I don't know if it's going to be hockey. I don't know if it's going to be girls or boys, but I think one of them is winning a championship this year. Yeah. I have hope. That's what we all say. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have hope, yeah. right? You got to have hope. For basketball, yeah. it depends how consistent we play throughout the playoffs, yeah. in my opinion, because we got teams like New Angel, New yep. Andrew, playing at their yeah. max potential right now, and we're inconsistent throughout each night. It just, it just varies on the night, to be honest. Because, like, there's days that I feel like we could be NBA teams by any chance. And then days that... Really? <laughs> Which no, day was yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But well, yeah. I love the confidence. Yeah. <laughs> I love the confidence. But there's days where, we, where we're just playing sloppy, missing yeah. open shots. It's just... Yeah. Depends on the day, in my opinion. Coming from the super f super fan himself, Dylan Cargars today. <laughs> yeah. You and Dawi at every game just <laughs> hyping up the teams, right? <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah. Alonzo Paul coming up the court with Alonzo Paul, Will Barbera, Ty Bergman, and Clay Nanke with them. Wolf, he has time. Pump fake. Pull up mid-range. It's so uh, it's so pretty effortless. It's it's he doesn't even have to put that much arc on it. One it thing just I like about right Mike is though he's not a strictly three point shooter. No he's not. His pull up game is phenomenal. The yep. height he gets on his shot is beautiful to watch. And people think that he's just a three point shooter. No he's not. He's not. He's, he's a not. versatile shooting guard. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad that he has another year in this program. Yeah. Because I think another year is going to serve him well not only yeah. to work on that pull up game and his shooting but adding in other dimensions, especially defensively. Yeah. If he can become a 3 and D guy who can also space the floor and get to the basket, he could be a college player. Oh, yeah. I even think now he's, he's, he's ready. He's trying very hard, too. He's been, telling, he's been emailing lots of colleges, getting some sort of interest back. It was just he's, he's making a good effort. I think he has a chance to play college ball. Just needs yeah. to keep working. Now, one last question about Michael. Obviously, we both know he has the skill to play it. What do you think his height could affect him when it comes to playing the college level? Or do you think it doesn't matter? I think it's more of a stamina aspect as well. Okay. I feel like the height mainly affects Zoe the most. Okay. But you never know. Well, it's obviously been okay for him so yeah. far, especially in the last couple of days when he's been putting up 30, 20. I mean, he's been playing ridiculous basketball. It's amazing to watch. I feel like the real test for Zoe be to see how he plays against like another six foot guard. Okay, that yeah. People play in college, just like all that stuff. Yeah. But Which he, he has had to play against some taller yeah, guards, but yeah. not some that are superstar yeah. talented by any means. Because I don't know how they'd react on defense if every player on the court can post Zoe up. That's a liability on the floor. In my I opinion. agree. I agree. But hey, we'll see. Tristan Hurdle working the dribble up top. He has five points so far, but he's been distributing the ball, he's been patient. He's just a great player. Kyle Sandler locking down on defense. Ooh, travel right there for sure. Michael Wolf coming over to one. trap. Almost a jump ball. Hollins. That's the shot we want. Okay, good. Oh. Good. Yeah, force him into a mid ranger three. Three! Long. Long. Yep. Good board by 15. One handed. Push oh. it. Ty Bergman. Blocks it. Wow. Oh, and that was great work. That's 25. Or sorry, 15, Connor Lathrop with his first board of the game. He's a tall, was, big man, was, and he works. He's physical for he's sure. He's physical. Ty Bergman. Beautiful. Ty did a good job going under the defense on that press. I think Lathrop was so excited about his yeah. first basket of the game, he forgot to play defense yeah. in transition as Ty Bergman scores his first bucket of the game. I think Will's doing a good job forcing him weak side. Yep. Ooh, Ooh Will Barbera almost picked the pocket. Raiders are everywhere yeah. on defense right now. Good job Will. Communicating. Oh, a lot. It seems like every yeah. time they throw a pass, the Raiders are a fingernail close to stealing yeah. it every time. Kyle Sandler there. They're Good double teaming him. Triple teaming right here. Oh, pump. Foul. And I got to say the patience to stay in there and not get frazzled. Lathrop, little quick fake spin move, fake to the right. He almost scored the and one, too, and he'll go to the line for two. 
As Blakely Stone's checking in the game right now. Lathrop, first free throw's good. He's number 15 on your screen. He's a senior, 6'5", coming in as one of the taller players on this team. There's also Luke Dry, the sophomore, who's 6'7". He's number 30. There's also 6'9", senior uh, Riker Sisarak, who has taken one shot this evening. And he's a crucial piece. He was dunking during pregames. And, and Dylan, a guy who, if they get it into the post, he could score it. But if the Raiders play good defense, he shouldn't be a problem. Oh, oh, Blakely's down. Bad pass to Michael Wolf. Wasn't looking. And here comes Tristan Hurdle. Over to the left. Blakely. Oh, my goodness. One thing I've noticed throughout the season is yeah. Blakely is such an all-around player. He could come in for anybody at any time. He's 6'2", but his vert is insane, in my opinion. Because, look, he comes and replaces Ty, guards anybody, blocks all the shots from big man, small guy. He's just playing all around. He can play in the post. He can play outside. Anything. Now, when it comes to Blakely, I've wondered this throughout the season. Maybe it's an unnecessary question. Is he a jump shot away from being a superstar in the state? Well, he Talk has the jump shot. He just doesn't shoot enough, in my opinion. Because okay. we play all the time. Me, yeah. Will, Blakely. We always play or pick yeah. up. We're not anything. He has the jump shot. If he just consistently shoots it, he can, he's an all-around player. Now, now, what is that? Is that a nerves thing? Is that a it's just pressure? Like, what, what is it? Because I agree. I've seen him make the shot, too. I just, what is it? What is it for him? I think it's basically the players around him. Like when you got better shooters like Michael Wolf and Kyle Sandler, yeah. they, they're taking most of the shots. And when he takes a shot, he likes to get down low, get in the post, and get a basket right away and not like settle for a three. But Just making the smart yeah. decision on the offensive end. But if he's open, he'll, you'll, you'll trust me. He'll pull it. Yeah. And we've seen him shoot yeah. one. Probably won't be his last. See, Will's doing a good job sagging off 35. But when he gets down low, you need to force him out to paint. Tristan Hurdle, jab step, three, off, Long. very hard. Here comes Will Barbera, a three on one. Barbera, inside to Alonzo, he somehow saves it. Wolf, ooh, I thought he was gonna take that three. Faking it. Gosh, he's just so lethal, because yeah. you never know when he's just gonna let it fly. Barbera, being patient, still yet to score. Good. Fake, take, good! Yeah. Barbera, the fake to the rim, and he got it for his first bucket of the game. Great patience by Will Barbera. Such a patient player. When he gets his looks, he can go off at any time. Let's see. Tristan Hurdle looking for a cutter. Oh, that has to be five seconds. Alonzo Paul working help the side, dribble. Help side, we help side. Rotate, rotate. Look at this defense. They're swarming yep. oh. Highlands Ranch. Euro that's step. Oh, that's an sure. offensive foul. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's a great charge by Will Barbera. Does it get much better than this defensively, Dylan? This no. is excellent. I think a charge is the most hype play to take in a, in a basketball game. It just motivates everybody throughout the court. It, it's just a great play. Yeah, I mean, you saw when Kyle Lowry took two charges during the All-Star game, the entire place was, yeah. was going bonkers. <laughs> It's supposed to be like a spill on the court or yeah, something. Yeah, really? Probably somebody sweat from falling on the ground. <laughs> yeah, something. it's probably Will Barbera. Gosh, look yeah. at all the sweat. It's like a waterfall <laughs> coming down from his head. Yeah. <laughs> Barbera coming down the court, wearing the nice KDs, my favorite. Oh, yep. Do you think KD is coming back this season? Oh, hold it out. Keep working on that jump shot and come back next season with Kyrie and win a chip. <laughs> right? This talks about him coming back throughout playoffs, though. But is it the right decision against Giannis as there's a Kick call ball. there? I, I just don't know. I, I, I say you hold it out because really, what are your chances of beating a Giannis and Chris Middleton-led team defensively? Giannis guarding KD. But I also feel like it'll bring more trouble to the Bucks if KD comes back. That's yeah. something more to worry about. But Defensively, it'll be a struggle. But yeah. Back to the game. We'll see. Blakely. Oh. Crossover. Oh, Will good pull shot. up long, oh. long for sure. It's a good pull up. On that, he had the full lane. If he kept going to the yeah. right, he could have finished his left hand on the right side. Again, it's just the aggression yeah. factor, Dylan. Taking it aggressively and knowing that he's the type of guy who can score it no matter what. One thing I admire about Michael Wolf, he likes getting to the line because yep. he knows he's such a good free throw shooter. He attacks even though he doesn't have the speed or quickness or size even. Yeah. He just wants to get in there, shot fake goes in, draws a foul. Highlands Ranch being patient, trying to find the right shot. 
They're playing the four, spin. three, oh. Archer, half quarter. Oh my oh, goodness! Full quarter. <laughs> Sorry, that was yeah, that was a three. Yeah. That was a Vince Carter free throw line, <laughs> half quarter or full quarter, whatever you want to call it. But 24 to 16, Raiders going to take the lead going into half. I have to say, defensively is, is where I'm the most hype right now, Dylan. I thought their defense was exceptional. Oh, definitely, yeah. Now, offensively, or defensively, either one, talk to me. What can they do to improve? Because eight-point lead, that's, this team can come back from eight. They got to do something to extend the lead and force this team to start to get nervous. I said they have to get to the line more. They're not being as aggressive as they need to be because they're just passing around the arc looking for, like, a deep ball. They're not, like, really attacking them, their man. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we have more game left. We have an entire half coming to you live here in Guy Gibbs Arena. Again, Dylan Cargars today, my good friend, broadcast with me for the first time. Finally. Yeah. Craig Kenny, Dylan Cargars today in the same season. Does yeah. it get better than that? <laughs> it doesn't. I've been trying <laughs> to get on for a while, though. I'm glad you're on. And Hudson Ridley doing camera for us does such a great job for Raiders Sports Network. And then Patrick Carlson. We're going to take a quick break here. 9-11 left to go in this game, or in halftime, and we'll be back with you. Sam Stern, we'll see you in a little bit. Good morning, Regis Jesuit. I'm Will Cassidy. And I'm Cole Monroe. This week on RJTV, we look into service immersion trip opportunities in a new segment called The Modest Minute. An update on the hockey season, your Raider Sports Spotlight, and a Valentine's Day Rabble segment. That and more this week on RJTV. Here at Regis Jesuit, we offer tons of opportunities to go into the world and serve others. And no program displays that more than our service immersion trips. Service plays an important role in our community. It's not only a prominent part of our mission, but a way for us to come together through serving others. Katie Messenger and Emma Barry have the story. Just amazing to see how oftentimes we take such unimportant and small material things for granted. I think my favorite part of Alaska was being able to participate in the first co-ed immersion trip. My most memorable moment was probably um, when we got to speak with the kids at a school and it was just crazy to see um, how much we could like speak to them and relate to them even though we didn't know the same language. I really enjoyed um, fishing and giving my cast net to some of the kids down in Belize. Uh, just seeing the smiles on their face was pretty cool. The most important thing to me was just taking the experience back from Belize and trying to live it out best here. Thanks, Katie and Emma. Sign-ups for immersion trips open today. Look for information from Mr. Matticchione and Ms. Ortiz. Now it's time for the Raiders Sports Spotlight with Kylie Pendleton and Cami Evangelista. What's up Raiders? I'm Kylie. And I'm Cami here with this week's Sports Spotlight. There was a lot going on these past couple of weeks, but especially for your boys hockey team. That's right. Coach Woodley reached 250 wins in his long time coaching here at Regis Jesuit. Olivia Giardino and Caitlin Marshall sat down with him as well as four year varsity player Nolan Sargent about their hockey experience. Check it out. Somebody found out that I used to play hockey and invited me to come and coach, and I don't know what came over me, but I decided to say yes. I enjoy the guys, you know, the, the team. One of the things that I realized when I started coaching again that I missed was the environment. The, the feeling of being on a team is the best part of hockey, and that's win or lose. Uh, I took on a big, big role of being the only one to be on the team for more than three years. It, I know the traditions and I know kind of how the team plays and how it should play. I believe that's what I'm going to leave on the team is just a guy that kids could look up to, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, even a senior, or someone that they could always go to to help with hockey or anything up, anything in their life. Just getting along or just playing to, hey, you know what, we're, we're strong, we're tough, we're good. That kids can look to and be like, yeah, he is a... That's what Regis Jesuit hockey is. The biggest part is looking on to the next game. Not a lot of kids get that 
opportunity to play for four years for their varsity sport. And it's just really special to be that player and then be have an impact. So just a big thank you. Uh, he's done a lot for me, whether it is supporting me through everything or give, getting me invites to junior camps. He's been there for me and he's always been a, my number one supporter. I try to promote an environment where you build people up. It's an interesting question because I don't ever focus on wins and losses as a coach. I, I talk to the boys about getting better each game and um, building our team and win or lose, we need to come out of this locker room a better team. Thanks, Olivia and Caitlin. Hockey plays tonight at Stanley Lake at 7 p.m. Another successful season has come from our girls' swim and dive team. 32 members competed yesterday as well as today in their state events. Ava Leggy gives us an introduction to the team. Ava and good luck at state girls. Girls basketball continues their undefeated in-state run. Senior Jada Moore reached an outstanding 1,000 points in her high school career last week in their winning game against Legend. They play Highlands Ranch Tuesday, February 18th at 5.30 in the boys gym. Boys basketball also gained a major win Tuesday night against Castleview with a score of 61 to 41. Senior night is tonight. They play against Mountain Vista in the boys gym at 7 p.m. Boys wrestling is keeping up with their impressive season after competing at the Mile High Classic. Antonia Segura gained another first place win, Xavier Carroll placed third, and Antonia Sandora got consolation champion. Congrats and keep it up. Girls wrestling competed at regionals two weeks ago where they competed for the last time this season. Congrats girls on your hard work and completed season. Can't wait for what's to come next year. Thanks Cammie and Kylie. Girls, make sure to register for the Roaring Twenties Father-Daughter Dance on March 8th at Empower Stadium at Mile High. Look for the sign-up link in the red and white. Speaking of dances, Regis at the Rocks, our winter informal dance is coming up in two weeks, Friday the 28th. Tickets are $6, so save the date for this Red Rocks themed dance. For Cadre today, we ask that you help make a difference in the lives of current and future Regis Jesuit students by making a small donation to your class endowed scholarship. Now, since it's Valentine's Day, our reporters Daniel Kuttner and Caleb Valenzuela went out and asked, what are you doing this Valentine's Day? What are you doing this Valentine's Day? I'll be buying some chocolates and some roses. Really, really? Have you ever went to a restaurant on yeah. Valentine's Day? Mm -hmm. Would you like to go? Oh, yeah. Damn. What's that? Probably just spaghetti. That's crazy, because I got some right here. <laughs> <laughs> mm, staying home. Stay at home? Yeah. What would you order at an Italian restaurant? Spaghetti. Oh, man. Right here, man. Probably pasta. Pasta. Would you order spaghetti? Yeah. <laughs> you want some spaghetti? Is this for me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, probably just sitting at home. Pretty lonely time of year for me. Some best diner nuggets. Best Italian food? Well, I do, yeah. A little yeah. bit. What would you order at an Italian okay. restaurant? Probably just the classic spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah. I got something for you, bro. <laughs> no! Actually, yeah. do you know if there's any Italian restaurants nearby? Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Thanks, Daniel and Caleb. Well, that was interesting, to say the least. Will, what are you doing this Valentine's Day? Crying alone. Oh, I was going to ask you to be my Valentine. But since you're busy, I guess that's all for this week. I'm Cole Monroe. And I'm Will Cassidy. Have a dandy day, Raiders. Welcome back. Sam Stern, Dylan Cargar is today. Patrick Carlson and Hudson Ridley helping us out as usual. Now, we got a minute 20 till game time. 24 to 16, your score going into uh, second half action. Now, we talked about it uh, going into halftime, Dylan. We got a great game going on, especially for the Raiders on the defensive end. We're seeing a lot of communication, a lot of, and we've seen them in the past go with a zone defense, and tonight they're going straight man, and it's worked. Don't be surprised if you see them switching it up, though. If they start getting hot, they're going to switch it up for sure. Yeah, for sure, as the teams start going to their bench, Will Barbera just tying his shoe a little late to the huddle. I was talking to Will at halftime. Yeah. He was saying, uh, I was telling him to shoot, boys, like, yeah, he asked, he was, he was just kind of, like, demotivated after that one miss that kind of missed wide off the glass. He kind of buys his confidence down a little bit from the shooting side yeah. of it, but and that's, hopefully he gains the confidence back. And that's the thing, is 
because I've seen it every game where he takes one shot, it was a miss, and then from there it just goes down. We're just waiting for that game where that one miss, like, maybe, like, flips a switch. Like, you got to go beast mode now. Because if we can get Will Barbera playing at an all-star level going into playoffs, I think this team's going to be pretty tough for a first-round matchup. Yeah. Working the dribble is Tristan Hurdle. He's been a primary ball handler, as Dylan Cargars today told you before the game started. He handles the ball. He can shoot it. He can take it to the rim. He's a stretch player. They're honestly looking for the mismatch that Zoe has. Whoever yeah. Zoe's got to get him the ball. Yeah. That was the left-hander for Highlands Ranch. That's 24 on your screen, Sullivan. Alonzo Paul, high pull-up is easy. He was got it by like two, three people there. That, are, that were twice his height, and yet Didn't he still scores him. it. Doesn't phase him. That's why I love him. He's one of my favorites on this team. Like a famous coach by Coach Shaw is don't ever adjust your shot. Just shoot your own shot. Yeah. And that was his first bucket of the game, too. So hopefully that gets him going on, on both ends of the floor. But in that first half, Blakely and, and Michael Wolf combining for six, or combining for 12. Each of them had six. and Consistent. Obviously, we need more numbers to impact the game, but a good start. Ty Bergman guarding on that left corner. Alonzo Paul, mismatch. Oh, that's an offensive foul. Thank yeah. you. Send it the other way. Great Joe's call. a great player, but he's yeah. also a great actor. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know what? We're on his side. Yeah, no. <laughs> we love the acting. That's part, that's part of his game. That yeah. makes him a phenomenal player. Yeah. The little, when he throws his head back, when he's dribbling the ball, just all that stuff. Little Pat, Pat Beverly-esque. Kyle oh, Sandler, shot. a rare corner pull-up from the mid-range. Usually it's a, a, a pull-up three-pointer. Yeah. <laughs> As Kyle Sandler now up to five points on the game. See right there, Blake needs to cut him off, force him left side. He's too comfortable going to the right. Kyle Ooh. Sandler cutting over. Blakely's down, helping. Ooh, that, Ooh, that was, was close. Oh. Good block from Blakely. Working it. One bounce, shot, good. Great post move. His second shot of the game, and it's good for Lathrop. Lathrop aggressive in the paint. He's been getting boards. He's been getting some post moves. Kyle Sandler, another one? Off that time. Takes a lot of shots, Dylan. Hey, but it's either it, hurt, it kills you or it helps you. You know what I'm saying? Blakely Stoughton working the dribble. Up high. Sullivan. Good defense by Zoe. Ooh. That's the shot we want him taking. Hey, Alonzo Paul's defense, too. As an undersized guard, he's been playing excellent defense. He's got to take advantage of this matchup now, too. Lonzo Paul, pump fake. Ooh. Kyle, spin move. Oh, oh, Ooh. oh, wow. Flagrant? <laughs> that <could be. laughs> About yeah. ripped his head off That's on the way to the rim. Smacked the top of his head. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're welcome, Dylan. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yep. Kyle Sandler taking this one down low. Again, it's Ty Bergman, Will Barbera, Alonzo Paul, Blakely Stoughton on the floor with Sandler. They're getting consistent play from everyone. Blakely Stoughton coming around the screen. Thought about a jumper. Let's see if Barbera does one here. Screen by Blakely. Oh, screen. Blakely rolls that. Oh, Dive is Blakely. Just trying to get that flare working. Ty Bergman, bully, Oh, but misses the layup. Oh, hard impact on the fall. From number five. Yeah, that was, was Riker. Sisorak. Yeah, Riker Sisorak. Sounds like a name from the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Tesseract and all that stuff. I'm not a big Avengers guy. I'll tell you that, I'm not though. either. I'm, that's the only thing I know. <laughs> Ooh, oh, a little walk, maybe. Wow. Instead of foul, we'll take it. He's frustrated yeah, right now. Don't be surprised if there's a technical. It's going to be a no call. He's getting upset, he's waving the upset. hands back and forth. Ooh. Wow, that's his fourth foul, and he's upset. Technical, oh, technical thank you. Foul, yeah. Slapping the chair down, I don't think so. Yeah. The ref wasn't having it at the first, at the start of it when he was said something right to the ref. Five. Oh, five fouls. Oh, five fouls. That is it for number five himself. That is big for <laughs> Riker Sisorak. What a perfect night. He's, he's number five, five fouls, ejected. Could it, could it work out any better? It can't, no. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Coach like him. <laughs> Loving it on the sidelines. 
And, ooh, short on the free throw is Alonso Paul. What, Sam, I have a question for you. What do you yeah. think about Zoe jumping on his free throws? You, does, I don't see it often, Dylan. Not saying that I don't think it's good, but I just don't see it. Is that, because, is that to add more power to his shot? Because he does that same jump, obviously, at, when he shoots his threes, when he shoots his pull-ups. Is that, what do you think? Is that a good thing? Is it not fundamentally right? I, I don't know. I mean, it's not right or wrong, but for me, I don't like to jump on my free throws because yeah. the chance of a lane violation is so much higher. Because if you if your foot even touches the red yeah. the, the red line, it's a lane violation. A free throw doesn't even count. Yeah. But with his size, well, jumping might not be a bad thing because he's used to it. Yeah. Yeah, you and I, and a lot of guys we see don't have a large jump on their jump yeah. shot. It's usually As a steady Wolf jump is checking shot. In who has a great free throw for him. Yes, he does. Ooh, number 11's wide open right now, man. Tristan Hurdle is a, up top open. It looks like they're in a zone right now. In a bad decision. Everybody's or a good decision. My, my bad. I don't know why Ooh. I said bad. Kyle. That should be a shot right here. Fake. Take. Oh, oh, oh. he almost finished a jelly. Instead, Hurdle saves it. That was a great play by number 30. Great play. Sorry, that was not Hurdle. Yeah. That was 30. Luke Dry, who's checking in for the first time. He's... The second tallest player on this yeah. team coming in at 6'7". He can dunk it. Right after Sisorak, who just got uh, fouled out. Kyle Sandler. The one-handed board, and here comes Alonzo Paul. Ty Bergman. One man to beat. Corner. Barbera. Shoot it. Shoot it, Will. Show the confidence. He has a lot of space. <laughs> that is too much space for Will. Alonzo Paul. Is... Kyle wants the ball. Kyle. Taking another shot. three. Ooh. Looks good His from here. His shots look by great Will. tonight. Will had a great tip. At the open. Blakely. He's getting oh. up. Ooh. Wow, he went up he high. He could have threw that down. He definitely could have dunked wow. that. He went up the escalator for the almost dunk as the guys on the sideline giving next, him. Next dead ball, we got Wolf, <laughs> Wolf, Wolf, Nick, and Van Sickle checking in the game yes. as Wolf is eyeing us down right here. <laughs> yes. He knew he should have dunked that one, Dylan. He's been wanting a post game. Let's give it to yeah. him. Well, hey. If he comes to me, Dylan, well, I'm not going to reject him. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Just go grab his hand and walk him over here? Or what? <laughs> By the time they get out the team room, <laughs> it's dark. Well, well, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Ooh, Nate Maloney on the court. <laughs> no, don't know what he's doing. Another Regis fan. Yeah. It's so interesting uh, as Nate Maloney comes onto the court. Did, did you know that his brother is into boxing now? I've actually seen that on his Instagram. Yeah. Is, is that interesting? Surprised. That surprises me for sure. He was a soccer player here and a phenomenal one at that. Yeah. He started his senior year and had quite a few goals. But he had this one big goal that was going all around the school. I forgot. Against Pine Creek. Yes. I called the game. You were. You, funny story, actually. The camera broke. <laughs> or sorry, no, no. The mic system broke. Really? So yeah. in order to get audio, I stood next to the camera and yelled <laughs> <laughs> for commentating. Uh. And it worked. I called the goal and put it in my pro portfolio. So, yeah, Patrick, you remember that, right? It was, it was hilarious. It was freezing. It was snowing outside. <laughs> <laughs> Blakely Stout working the dribble. Oh, Ooh, Will. Good, good Can we get a dunk here, Will? Will, take, oh, finish. That was a good coast to coast by Will. He's such a steady player. Knows what he's doing. As he comes up the court, he now has four points. A low-scoring game, but he's done way more to impact yeah. the game, especially on the defensive end. Clay Nanke playing great defense. What a move! Ooh, but and off. Oh, that's Good our hustle. ball. I love the defense yeah. by Clay Nanke. And I think you notice this. I think this is what makes a great defender. You notice how in the post you see a lot of guys hip-checking, grabbing the hips, pushing. You saw Clay Nanke. His hands were up in the air. So they couldn't call an offensive foul on him because he had his hands straight up. The entire time. Because he was struggling with foul trouble all throughout the season. Yeah. And like the JV league and all that stuff. But that's what he learned. Good cut by Clay, but going too fast. He needs to yeah. slow it down a little bit. Find the gap. Shoot that gap for the cut. Get help side there. Oh, good pull up by Tristan Hurdle. And he's off right now. Yeah. Van Sickle trying to work out of the double team when he does. Uh -huh. Barbera has a four on three. Barbera oh. takes it himself. Almost finished it. Michael Wolf saves it. Archer. Ooh. Oh, oh, injured player, injured player. grabbing the left ankle. 
Let's just make sure he's okay. Are they, Are they allowed to stop play when Regis has the ball and their players are down? That's a, you know what? I'm not 100% sure, but I think Coach Shaw might have called a timeout, a 30-second. Not 100% no. sure. But either way, he's going to check out, and Hollins will check in for him, who has two points now, or four points, my apologies, on the evening. He's had a, a rough time scoring. It's either in the paint or nothing with him, Dylan. He's an inside scorer, not a shooting threat from the outside, neither mid-range or three-point shooting. Stoughton looking to Will. Will needs to be aggressive with the ball. They need to move the ball on the other side of the court. They're all on one side. Yeah, they're all just standing, too. It's they on need the to left keep side of the court. They need to move. Oh, and a turnover. Wolf trying to save it. He does over to Will. Almost a turnover. Oh. Blakely stop. Is this just oh amazing God, or what? Call Shaquille O'Neal for Shackton. Wolf to Barbera. Alley-oop. Oh, Clay Nanke oh blocked. Wow, to call that hectic would be an understatement. Or sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Deep three. Wow. No good. Not a good shot. You do not need to be shooting. Threes. And he played in the JV game before. We don't have his name on the roster, but all I could tell you, we're going to call him Shooter because he hit five threes in JV the game. My apologies. That's Jack Backen, the left-hander who can shoot threes. He's playing on this varsity team as a swinger as Tristan Hurdle gets his seventh point of the game there, and they're going to take their time. The Raiders right near half. They have to settle and slow it down a little bit because they're playing fast. They're scoring layup after layup. We need to slow it down, stop playing so crazy, find a good shot. See, Will's wide open there. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, oh. He just dribbled himself in such a bad situation Blakely. in the corner. Oh. A three off. And here comes Highlands Ranch running. Only a 12-point game, trying to cut it to single digits. Jack. This could do it. He got it. The left-hander striking one from the right side. That's exactly what the Raiders don't need right now. It's now a nine-point lead with six Five, four, three, Archer, two, one, oh. off. Great pass to Archer Van Sickle. <laughs> yeah. Their pass or shot? What, what was that? Was that a pass? Or, it, it, from Archer, from Van Sickle, was that a shot or a pass to Clay? Um, it looked like a shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People can call it a pass, though. Yeah, they, and they will. They will cover call it. <laughs> yep, they will call it a pass. Yeah. 34 to 25 is our score. We're going to take a quick time out here to catch our breaths here on the Raiders Sports Network. Sam Stern, Dylan Cargar's today, Patrick Carlson, and Hudson Ridley. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back as we got Michael Wolf, Blakely Stoughton, Ty Bergman, Alonzo Paul, and Will Barbera who's going to get this one off the inbound play. Sam, I have a question for you. Who do you like more to bring it up, Will Barbera or Alonzo Paul? Can you repeat that question one more time? I'm sorry. Do you, would you rather have Will Barbera taking the ball up the court or Alonzo Paul? You know what? I think they're both reliable. I don't really have a preference. I think, I think they're both talented players. For me, it depends on time and score. I agree with if that. If you need a bucket, give Zoe the ball. That's not the right yeah. decision there. What a pass and a finish. Now only a seven-point game, Dylan. See, Raiders need to slow it down. They're playing to their speed. Oh, That's Barbera terrible loses it again. Barbera. Oh, my gosh, Dylan. We've seen this happen to us before. Fourth quarter, turnovers. Oh, my. Three. Short, short, yeah. Short. Gosh, they're, they're giving it to them. Yeah. That would have killed us if that one in. Alonzo Paul with Kyle Sandler checking in. Dylan, what are you seeing? Uh, I'm just seeing they need to slow the, slow the pace down a little bit more because they're playing at their speed. Because the ranch wants to play fast. They want to get quick shots. But Raiders, we have the lead. We need to slow it down. That's a bad shot by Wolf, but it goes close to going in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We know Michael Wolf's not bashful on the yeah. offensive end by any means. Another three-point try, and he got it this time. Who is this man? Yeah. 
Where did he come from? <laughs> That's the question I want to have. <laughs> All of a sudden, he just walks through the doors and comes onto the court and hits two threes. He's, he's two for four right now. <laughs> but see, that's what you want. It doesn't look like he went two for four. It yeah. looks like he's hot from the three-point line right now. Wolf, wide open three. That's the guy. That's short. Another miss. That's a good tip by Ka Oh, Hollins. Throwing elbows. Manhandled yeah. on that offensive board. And here they come, trying to cut it. Keep an eye on number four. To a one-possession game. Ooh. Tristan Hurdle off. Whoa. Here comes Paul. It's a one-on-two. Going coast to coast. Paul, high miss. But Barbera's there. Great hustle yeah. by Will Barbera to come and recover it. Slow it down, run your offense, get it going. That's what we need. Blakely Stoughton over to Will Barbera. Crossover. Pass. Michael Wolf. Finish. Will Barbera. As Michael Wolf is talking his talk yeah. to number 35. He's talking. He's a trash talker. But he has the play to support it. <laughs> Handling the ball is Jack Backen, who has six points. See, force him right. Oh, that's a tough shot. That is little. deep wow. and down. That is Timeout, Highlands Ranch. This is ridiculous three-point shooting. Three threes in this fourth quarter alone. It all started with number four, Jack Backen came in the yeah. game. Put a little spark in as Wolf is talking to the officials. And Dylan, I'm not going to offend the other team and say that they're just lucky or anything or that they're wide open but the Raiders aren't playing defense on the three-point line I feel like that's the one they played great defense all night long this just been one thing they can't guard the three-point line and it's about rotation communicating it yelling is. out who you have moving on the floor off ball movement you gotta you gotta communicate you said it there yourself communication is the best part of your defense just talking just gets the offense nervous it gets some it gets some movement fast that's what you want because if you're on defense, you want the offense to take a quick shot or whatnot because you don't want to play defense for a long time. You get tired. If you get, if you get them to take a quick shot from a pull-up three or a difficult shot, that's what you want. Yeah. Lonzo Paul, high pass to Michael Wolf. Oh, tough could've pass. Court. Yeah, could have been. Oh, good no look by Zoe. Sandler, pass inside to Bergman. Oh. Misses the layup. Oh, that is wow. a big one. It's a one possession game. They could tie it here with a three. Hurdle, holding it. Looking for Jack Burton. You gotta We're watch his in. shooting. He could tie it. Hurdle, oh, three, three for the tie. He got, got it. it. Hurdle ties it with a three. 36, 36. He is in the wow. zone. Tristan Hurdle's in his zone. As they're in a one, two, one. I mean, what type of defense what, are you in, Sandy? I, I, I don't, don't know, know what they're doing. They're in a, a, one, a one, two, one, three, one, one or something. Possibly, it could possibly be that. Yeah. Blakely's down, trapped. Ooh, oh. almost got the end one, sent him to the line. Ooh, it's starting to get rough there, but again, and that was a deep three there, too. That's NBA range yeah. three from Hurdle. He's hit two threes. Ooh. You talk about Hurdle and Backen. Like that's I said, their the start, two options. At the start of the game, you don't want Tristan Hurdle to get high because it's, yeah. trust me. It's, if he's hot, so, he's it's nice. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. And an off free throw there and crucial. How long has it been since the Raiders got a bucket is my question. I don't they've, think they've scored in this they, quarter, have they? they? Or I, No, they, they have. They scored one bucket as Stoughton gets one there. But, yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a scoring yeah. drought, to say the least. And they need scoring, too. they got to separate themselves from this team because, as you can see, one three and they have the lead by two. Good job forcing Jack uh, back Turnover. Right. Oh, Blakely dunk it on him. Blakely. Pump fake. Yeah, settle the offense. Sandler, a three. Well, yes! Got it! Kyle we'll take Sandler. It. He's feeling himself tonight. As that weed is going crazy in the stands. <laughs> Gosh, he's quite the spectacle for sure. Gosh, he's amazing. How about an answer? Long. Oh, gosh. Top would have been blown off the building. This Blake game is all about momentum swings. It is. And time out by Shaw. Time out full. We got a full it time a out full. coming. 346 left to go. Kyle Sandler hitting a big three to separate themselves by four points. Two possession game. We got a lot of time left though, Dylan. Anything can happen in 346. What are you thinking? Well, one thing I gotta say, this lineup they got in yeah. is a great lineup, and this is basically the team next year as well, because we got Blakely Stoughton, Kyle Sandler, Ty Bergman, Michael Wolf, and Alonzo Paulin. Those people, if they get experience together, that's 
that's setting them up, setting them up for success for next season, in my opinion. Yeah. You got it. The more the more practice that you can have with that lineup going into next year, especially with all the off-season work that they're going to get in and, and, and practices and tournaments, the better. The more confidence that's going to be built up. We got 3.46 left to go, as I said, left in this game as, as Coach Salida is going to the scoreboard to check on timeouts yeah. and fouls. Should have a couple timeouts left. There's five fouls for Highlands Ranch and none for the Raiders right now. So shout out to Bang Energy Drinks. You know, I never could get into those. It just keeps me hydrated. It keeps me energized for the yeah. game. Well, I'm glad you brought a drink, yeah. too, because uh, as we heard last in the last <laughs> broadcast with Craig, I forgot to offer my, my drink to him yeah. and uh, <laughs> felt really I'm terrible. I'm surprised I don't see a Coke here, Sam. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's usually my go-to. but Oh, that's a good move by Ty. What a move, Bergman. <laughs> that was a good little hop step he did to get yes. inside. He has post moves for sure. He He's been working on it. Kind of a Matt Wheelock-like move yeah. there. <laughs> Ooh, Blakely that was Stout. great defense by Stoutland. Excellent defense. Oh, and that's a foul. Thank yeah. you. Center of the line. That should be bonus, is it not? By Sullivan DeGuzman. One more. Okay. Yeah, Sullivan, who has one bucket on the game, and that's really it. Really hasn't that been was, able to find a rhythm. That was off the post stop uh, on Zoe, actually, top of the key. Yeah. They really found a way to stop that. Lonzo Paul over the top to Blakely. Kyle. Thought he was just, I thought he was going to shoot it. Yeah. He's been feeling himself. Wolf. Calling out a play, takes it himself to the bucket, oh. and he's fouled. See, that's what Michael Wolf wants. He wants to get to the line because he's a great free throw shooter. Oh, and Ky Kyle and, and Lanthrop are really getting into it down low as Michael Wolf stared him down going to the free throw line. I'm loving this. It's a six point lead. Trying to make it eight is Michael Wolf, the best free throw shooter on this team, coming in at 81% tonight. They have a good amount of size in on the floor right now with Blakely Stone, Kyle Sander, and Ty Bergman at the same time. Yeah, perfect. But all of these players are all-around players. There's You're right. Not, there's no specific big man here, like, other than, like, Ty maybe, but they all can score the ball. That's what They're versatile. Say. Yeah. They're very versatile. Exactly. As Wolf nails the second one, two easy clutch free throws, and they're going to put Michael on, I'd say, the best shooter on the floor right now, which is Jack Backen, and they got to stop him from hitting threes. Hurdle has backing in the corner. Are you kidding me? Long, long, long. Almost got the roll, but Kyle Sandler's there for the board. Tough one there. Yeah. Uh, he had the look. Oh, what defense by, by Sullivan. Sullivan. Guzman. And oh, good Wolf job by Michael saves it. Wolf. What hustle for Michael that Wolf. That was great hustle. Alonzo Paul splits the double. Oh, he's on a dribbling expedition. Mike, Alonzo Paul. Oh my goodness! Oh my God! What a pass to Blakely Stelton! Wow. Are you kidding me? That just erupted the stadium. Alonzo Paul. Gosh, a dribbling clinic. Let's see how Ranch responds to this. Oh my goodness, Alonzo Paul. Oh, oh wow. what? Oh wow. <laughs> Dylan, as the as the ref you are, what was that? <laughs> that? That is called a bad call. Okay. okay. <laughs> the reason being is they have to call the game even the whole game. Yeah. If they if they've learned they've learned, they've let the players play a little bit physical throughout the whole game, yeah. they got to let that one slide. And that free throw is good. Got the got the roll. I, that Alonzo Paul take. The poise, the patience. He had guys surrounding him the entire time, and the way he's able to look through the paint and find a wide-open Blakely. Thank goodness we have him for another year. Oh, yeah. What impressed me the most was that pass, the no-look to Blakely oh, for that layup. Great pass. Through three guys yeah. in the paint. How do you even see him? The court vision. Kyle Sandler gets Ooh. it over Alonzo Paul. Is he going to do it again? Oh, my God. Oh, oh Alonzo. <laughs> he's really trying to put on a show for the yeah. fans tonight. <laughs> oh. And it's going to be a timeout. I like that idea from Lonzo Paul. There. I do too. That's what Coach Hall wants out of your playmakers. He wants deception. Yeah. He's made. He's really focused that throughout the season. But yeah. And they knew what his intention was yeah. too. They knew his intentions. 46-38 yeah. is an eight-point game with two minutes left. Coach Lee the back to check the timeouts. He <laughs> is. You gotta love Coach yeah, Salida. I do. He's he's so amazing, Dylan. He's, he is. He's, he's a great one of my coach. favorite person throughout the whole basketball organization. I would agree. 
I would. It's just such a great person. Very humble. Very kind. Mm -hmm. You know what else too is, I, and I notice this from going into practices and watching the team. He really works with each guy individually on a regular basis, making sure that every player has time to learn what it takes to be a great athlete and a great basketball player in the program. As Will Barbera checks, in, he's going to check in the game. Yes. My question is, why don't they let Will Barbera yeah. check in the game right now? Yeah, I would agree. You know, the Raiders could really use Will Barbera's clutch defense right now. Best defender on the team by far. So oh, definitely. Not even close. He definitely needs to shoot the ball more. He does. Yeah. He's had a couple mid-range jumpers that I thought he needed to take. Oh, good help by Three. Michael Wolf. It's good. And Will Barbera's not happy about that one, as we are. Uh, that's three threes in the quarter, too, Dylan, for him. That's Hurdle. Oh, as, oh good pass by Kyle Sandler. Alonzo Paul coming. Alonzo Paul has three guys guarding him. Almost turned oh, it over. Yeah. Oh, Yep, that's a foul on Jack Backen. A little over-aggressive. And should be Oh, free, yeah, they're be, in the bonus. Yeah, there should be a one-and-one one coming that is a, Kyle's way. That foul differential is crazy. Eight to Eight one. Eight to one. That just shows Ranch isn't being as aggressive. They're, they're just settling for outside shots, but that's what got him back in the game. You're right. Sandler, first of the one and one, got is it. up and perfect. Perfect. Kyle Sandler, it's just one of those games for him tonight, Dylan, where it seems like everything's working. Yeah. For the most part. The main part about it is his confidence, though. I agree. He, he's stayed the same from the start to the end of the game. Yep. Nothing changed, which is really good. Sandler nails both free throws. He's only a sophomore. We got him for another two years after this. As Jack Backen is trying to take it up on Will Barbera. They got to be looking for hurdles. Crossover. Oh, that was pass. pass. No foul. And that, oh, that should be Raider ball. Oh. No, it's going to be off of Hounds It looked like it bounced off 15. I thought it went off of the thigh, but either way, it's going to be the Raiders ball. But the defense by Ty Bergman, he's obviously yeah. undersized compared to uh, Lathrop, but I thought he played great defense yeah. going that straight up. That was a great pass by Sullivan to Guzman. You're right. Oh, this is who they want. Blakely Stoughton Maybe guarding a high. Minute, a minute, five left. Spin move. Lathrop, reverse. Oh, great move. Lathrop. Great move by Connor Lathrop. The Hakeem Elijahwan-esque wow. spin move to the basket for two. It looked like Mason Moyle just fouled so crazy as he fouled. There we Kyle go. Sandler. Thank you. Yeah. And Kyle Sandler will go to the line as they have now their ninth yeah, next, foul. Next foul is a double bonus, Yeah, which is good for the Raiders. Great for the Raiders. Just make your free throws, you win the game. Something just to point out for those of you, you're going to see it on your center of your screen after these free throws, but the Belibi family is sitting first row in the center. Uh, great for them to come tonight. Obviously, they knew tonight was a great night with girls playing before and boys. And their daughter, uh, Francesca Belibi, who was a dunkathon yeah. the last four years, she was in town against CU. Really? Uh, with Stanford, she had seven points off the bench in a in an upset against yeah. CU. They they beat CU and. It was, a, it was a great game, but glad to have Fran coming yeah. back to her hometown team. All right. As we got Tristan Hill taking up the, up the court. Screen from uh, Another three. And, oh. And he's fouled. That's a tough foul. Big. You don't want that. Stop the clock and bring points. Oh, my God. And there's still 41 seconds. Yeah. This is not, nowhere near over. Because they're going to keep fouling. But luckily they're bringing in Michael Wolf, who's going to play great defense, but also yeah. knock down his free throws yeah. if they get it to him. They got to keep Kyle and Michael in. Oh, they got to. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say this. Uh, I wonder who he's taken out. I guess we're about to see. I would say Will Barbera because you he's, think so? been, he's been struggling from the line lately. But we'll Do see. you think could, that's why be, they're bringing Michael in? It could in be or? Will Barbera or Blakely, but I don't think Blakely will be going out because he's too good on defense for the team. Yeah. Okay. Will Barbera checks out the game. Do you think that they'll rotate him back in for defensive purposes, though? Um, Possibly. Because Michael Wolf should. can defend, too. No, yeah, yeah, but Will is a better defender, on-ball defender. Michael Wolf is better at jumping the pass and yeah. shooting the gaps. I agree. As he makes two for three, correct? Three for three. Three for makes three. Both. Yeah, or oh, wow. makes all three, yeah. And those are big free throws. Yeah. You couldn't afford to miss. And it's going to be a full timeout for Highlands Ranch. Four-point game, 41.6 left. And as, we, and as I just said to you, Dylan, it's nowhere near over. Oh, no, two no. buckets, and they either are tied or, we have the lead, or they have the lead. Yeah. So, and as we saw last game... As that one went to overtime, anything can happen. And, and uh, this is a crucial game for the Raiders. As this is their second to last game of the season, Dylan. And yeah. Their last one's against Ponderosa, an opponent that 
I'm not going to say that it's a guaranteed win, but usually every yeah. year that's a game that we usually win like on a regular last basis. Last year was senior night. Everybody got to play that game. It was the most fun game to watch, yeah. in my opinion. It was just a blowout, too. It was just... It was just an all around good game. It was, but in my opinion, I like I love the legend game. But it was what are, fantastic. What are your thoughts about the? Last I'm glad shot? you brought that up. Yeah. And, and Patrick, I don't know. Do you have that? Do you still have that shot from Legend queued up by any chance to play, or do we not have it? We're gonna try to see if we can bring it up for you guys. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. it was a pretty crazy call. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, what was that? Two games ago? Was yeah, it three? Two games. Oh, uh, it was two played, or yeah, three two, games ago. Yeah, because they played Cassidy and then they played yep. Mount Vista. And and Patrick's gonna be playing it on your screen right now. Yeah, my, I'm just dry. I, as a I am too. You know, waiting at these timeout breaks, it's just hard. Cameron Levan, they're gonna wait for it. Are they really gonna try to take this one away? They are gonna try it. Six seconds left to go. Four. Three, two, for the game! Hit the shot plus the foul. What do you think? Was that a foul? I, I thought it was. Brief, but it was a foul. It wasn't a foul at the time. Like, at the time in the game, like, you don't, you, in my opinion, I would not call that as a ref. Well, and I wouldn't Ooh. either. But if, if we're asking, if we're saying whether it's a foul or not, it's a foul. As, oh, oh. my goodness! Vicious! Gosh! What a block! Three! Off. Oh, big foul. What an emphatic block on the defensive end the by punk. Lathrop. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he had some anger on that one. In my books, the game is over. Yes. But you never know what happens. You never As know. Will checking in the game. You never know. Coming back in for Michael Wolf strictly for defensive purposes. Yep. Gosh, that, it's just been a crazy game yeah. all over the place. But Kyle Sandler, these could possibly be the dagger free throws. No, yeah. He's a phenomenal free throw shooter, yeah. Perfect. It's just so effortless. <laughs> As I was going for the high five there. <laughs> yeah, Michael yeah. Wolf's too serious. Yeah, yeah. Can't interrupt his, his, his vibe. He has the serious side and the fun side. Yep. Free throw. Easy. Got it. Sandler, he's, he's just exceptional. 11 yeah. seconds. They better hurry, and Hurdle better take a three from half. Takes it. Makes wow. it! Time, Time out. out! Wow. As I said, this game's nowhere near over. As Michael, <laughs> Michael Wolf checks, checks in, in for free throw purposes. Gosh, Hurdle, five threes in the fourth quarter. You're right. Once he gets going, he isn't missing. That would have meant something way more if he hit that one corner shot for three, but... Oh, that would have been crucial, yeah. especially no, if they also would have gotten that one, too, because what is that? Two-point game. Yeah, the place would have erupted, in my opinion, as well. Yeah, it's big. We're coming down to the end. About six seconds, 5.5 seconds left we're, to go. We're coming down to Tracy, uh, a Reggie Miller type scenario here. Yes. Where they got to steal the inbound. Yep, yeah. Or, what, or was that also Tracy McGrady where there was like eight seconds left against the Spurs when he was yeah. on Houston? I think it was and something he, like And he that scored point. like 13 points in eight seconds but to win the game. But it was Reggie Miller, like nine seconds he scored 12 yeah. points. I think it was that too. It was like six, nine points. It was something like that. Yeah, it was, was just crazy. Yeah. Some great Going heart. back to the legend part. So yes. Yeah. As a referee, yeah. It, well, I was talking to Will Barbera about it. He didn't get pushed at all. Will Barbera had to jump to the side yeah. to contest the man in general. But he sold it in a way because he didn't really sell it, but he was just playing it how you would originally play it. Yeah, and the the ref saw some contact apparently because yeah. Cam Levan was just standing there. He, he could have set like a screen like posture, but extended the hands, which which yeah. really cost him the game. But it's a, it's a tough one, yeah. and we'll talk more about it as as we go to the free throw line here in a second. Blakely Stoughton going to inbound this one to Kyle, and they're going to foul him as he goes to the free throw line three point eight. But back to that. Here's my take on it, and I think this is a good. I think that we would both agree on this. Should it have been called? No. no. But if we're talking about whether it was a foul or not, it was a foul. But do you call it with to two seconds? To me, second, that wasn't a foul. But, but do you call that, if it is a foul or if it's not, either way, if it's a foul, do you call that with two seconds left in a game? I no. don't think you do. In a t with two seconds left in a close game, that's not a call you make, in you my just, opinion. You just got to respect the shot, in my opinion. I agree. As Kyle Sandler misses the first one. Yeah. And we've been respecting his shot all game. <laughs> this is the He's deal. He's got one more. For the dagger. 52 to 49. Sandler got, got it. it. He's got ice in his veins on that free throw. Hurdle. Half court. Half court. Three. Game over.
The Raiders hold on, 53 to 49. Dylan, last thoughts before we close this one out. It's been a pleasure broadcasting with you, Sammy. I hope to be on the mic back on this season, maybe hopefully playoff game or whatnot. Yeah. But yeah. We'll try our hardest. What a yeah. great game. Some two great games, a, a game winner by Savitri Jackson in that girls game to win it against Highlands Ranch, and then a, a, a hard-fought game here for the, for the boys' team, for the Raiders, and just a great evening of basketball. And we're so glad that you decided to spend your evening with us here on the Raider Sports Network. It's been a pleasure as usual. For the rest of our crew, Dylan Cargarza today, Hudson Ridley, Patrick Carlson, my name is Sam Stern. You have a great evening.